Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy and physical science. In this video, we are going to go through the scientific methods lab that we will be using and just kind of walk you through the various steps and things that you will need for this video. So I'll take a time and go through each section so you try to understand what you need in each one. So let's take a look. I give you a basic overview of the materials that you might need for this lab. And then we're going to talk about measurement errors and uncertainties in part one. Now the first step here in question one is asking you to look at this uh, little spectrum you've been given and this spectrum has seven different lines on it. Your estimated measurements are where you feel that those colors fall on this line. So if you feel that orange is at 720 okay that's completely wrong but if you felt that it was that's what you would write down you would write down 720 nanometers for that value. So you just label each of these on your answer sheet. Just put what value you give for each of these and what your estimate is. The second one you want to talk about your uncertainties. How close do you think you might be? Are you within 10 nanometers, 20 nanometers, 50 nanometers? So there's not a precise exact answer I'm looking for here, but you want to get try to estimate how far off you are and not just say I don't have any clue or I think mine are exact. You want some rough estimate of how many nanometers you think you might be off. Question three asks you to make your answers more precise. What could you do to, me to measure these better? Now let's scroll up and look at the rest of this. Let's look at the rest of these questions here. For number four, what you want to look at is you're going to use a ruler. So you'll need a ruler here and you're going to measure diff distances between three sets of lines, blue and yellow, yellow and red, and then finally blue and red. So you're going to measure those three, those three and write their values in either centimeters or millimeters. You can use either one uh, for your values. And then you want to estimate your errors here. Put a plus or minus. So if you thought it was 25 millimeters, you might write 25 plus or minus. Maybe you thought you were one millimeter off. Or maybe you thought you might be as many as two. So 25 plus or minus one millimeter is what you'd put there. OK, so finally, what we're going to look at is number five here. Now, number five causes the most trouble. We're going to look for a scale factor between these two. And how we do that is we have to take our measurements from part one and part four and put them together. So let's say we determined that red was at 600 nanometers. And let's say that we said that yellow was at 500 nanometers. Now these are not the values you should be getting. They're quite off but it's just to show what you're supposed to be doing here. Now if we then subtract those what are we going to find? Well, we can take the difference between those and find out that they are 100 nanometers apart. And now we need to measure them. So let's go ahead and measure these two. How far apart are they actually if we measure? And let's just say we measured them to be 10 millimeters apart. Well, then you take this value here, 100 nanometers, and you divide it by what you got here, which is 10 millimeters. And you would then get that the answer is 10 nanometers per millimeter. That would be your scale. And you're going to do that for each of these three sets. You're going to do it for those three different sets of lines that you measured in part four. So you will get three scale factors. They should be relatively close together. And then you add those up and divide by three. That is your average value. That is what you are going to want at the end for your answer. You're going to average your value. So write down all three values you got and then give me your average. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Let's look at part two. Now part two is looking at precision and accuracy. So what you need to do here is to look at each of these little targets. On each of these targets, there are a set of arrows or bullet holes, whatever you're using there, that have hit the target. They may either be accurate or precise, and they may be either or both. Now remember what we're looking at here. Accuracy is how close it agrees with the correct value, how close you're getting to the center. 
Precision means how close the individual measurements agree with each other, even if you're not close to the actual value. So something can have high accuracy if it's close to the center. So if you're hitting close to the bullseye, you have high accuracy. If you're hitting close to the same value each time, if you have a very tight grouping as compared to a spread out grouping, then you have high precision. So you will write an H or an L in each of these blanks. You have to fill in each one. Make sure you tell me whether they're high or low. There is no middle ground. It is either high or low, one or the other. Now for part three, we're looking at significant figures. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, go through this and look at the significant figure video I gave you in the math help if you're not familiar with this. But some numbers are exact, some numbers are measured. Things that we measure give us these general rules for significant figures. So when we look at these, you then want to look at things like all non-zero digits are significant. So if you have a number like 28, that's two significant figures because all of those are significant. Leading zeros never count as significant. So 0 0.01 has exactly one significant figure because these are leading zeros. They come before the first non-zero number, which makes them significant. Embedded zeros in between something else, 705. The 7 is significant and so is the 5, but so is the uh, 0 because it's in between two other significant values. When you look at scientific notation, for example, everything to the left, anything to the left of the power of 10 is significant. The power of 10 is not meaningful for significant figures. And then zeros appearing to the right of a decimal point are significant, but that's only if they're not leading zeros. So any zero to the right of a decimal point, if we write 0 0.2700, then we have four significant figures. The leading zeros are not significant until we come to a non-zero number. These two are not zero, so they're significant. These two zeros at the end are significant because they are after a decimal point. Now that would be quite different than if you wrote 2700. Now there is no decimal point in the number and these two values are not significant. And again, I recommend that you go to the significant figures video that I gave. That will give you more detail and, and then I can go to here. Now finally, the last section kind of puts a lot of this together, these the significant figures, and has you do some calculations here. So what you're going to do is a number of different calculations, and then you just need to express the value in the correct number of significant figures. So you put these into the calculator and do that. You are welcome to convert scientific notation to standard notation if you find that easier first. So it does not matter how you want to do that. You can express your answers in scientific notation or standard notation. Those are the only two options that you can use. So when you do these, you just do everything out and then you use these last two rules up here to determine when things are significant how many significant figures when you're when you answer when you're multiplying or dividing the answer cannot have any more significant figures than the number with the least so if we have that then if you have say 25 and you're adding to that 1.3 your answer, if you add that, is 26.3. But this one, this one ends at the tenths place. This one ends at the ones place. Therefore, your answer has to be rounded to the ones place. And if we put this in significant figures, it will be 26 would be your answer. So again, take a look at those videos that I give you for working with significant figures if you're not sure on any of this, and that will help hopefully help you go over them some more. But I wanted to give you a rough idea of everything that you needed to do for the lab here. So that concludes this video on the Scientific Methods Lab. We'll be back again next time to go over another one of our labs in class. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.